Hey guys, it's Hussein again from AVI Engineering. After learning in the previous video how to determine the indoor design conditions, temperature and humidity, we will learn in this video how to determine the outdoor design conditions for heat loss, which are similarly outdoor temperature and humidity, in addition to wind speed. For the definition, please refer to the previous video. Moving on. So how do we determine the outdoor conditions? Outdoor design conditions are actually a reflection of the severity of the climate the studied building experiences. Therefore, building location is the primary factor in determining these conditions. Unlike the indoor conditions which we control and try to keep constant, the outdoor conditions are out of our control. Finally, the outdoor climate varies on a day-to-day -day and year-to-year -year basis. Okay, so you can see that outdoor conditions are a bit more complicated than indoor ones. The severity of the weather is different at different times. What does one choose? Well, if someone were to design a heating system to counter the climate effect, it should be able to keep us warm at all times. Therefore, the design outdoor temperature would have to be the lowest temperature ever recorded, right? Well, wrong. Engineers prefer, especially in the heating season, to avoid considering the extreme low temperatures because it will result in increased system size which in turn leads to high initial and operational costs of the heating system. To give you an idea, consider the following example in the town of Stura in Lebanon and particularly the dry bulb temperature in the winter season. We will refer to the ASHRAE Climatic Design Conditions Database found free online. You will use this resource whenever you need to determine the thermal outdoor design conditions. So write it down somewhere and you can find the link in the description. Okay, so back to Stura. We will consider for the time being that the design temperature and the extreme temperatures are given just for the sake of delivering the idea, but keep in mind that shortly in this video, I will show you how to select them using the ASHRAE tool. The design dry bulb temperature is 0.7 degrees Celsius, while the extreme annual condition is minus 7.2 degrees Celsius for the lowest temperatures recorded at a frequency of 50 years. This is a humongous difference, a delta T of about 8 degrees at a design of 0.7 degrees Celsius, the heating system you would have installed and operated would have to be doubled in case of design temperature of minus 7.2 or even more. And the larger system means higher initial and operational costs. But all of this is for what? The minus 7.2 degrees Celsius mentioned is likely to happen every 50 years. So for example, let's say that this extreme temperature took place this year in 2020. The next time it will take place is probably in the 2070s. In between these two times, the temperature will be almost all of the time above the design temperature. Therefore, clearly, the costs spent financially outweigh and by many folds the discomfort felt from a couple of days of extreme weather every number of years. You can simply put on a thicker jacket and stay at home for these couple of days, like this handsome fellow. So how then do engineers choose the outdoor design temperature? Engineers need a number that would work best from the comfort to cost perspective. The design value should provide almost everyday comfort at practical operation costs. It is common practice between engineers and also as per the ASHRAE 2009 handbook to use the 99% dry bulb design temperature in the winter season. But what is this 99% temperature? To explain the 99th percentile concept, we will draw a graph based on the ASHRAE recorded weather data between the years of 1998 and 2014. 16 years worth of data across different places in the world to produce the 99th dry bulb design value. The guys really put in the work. Now the graph will have on its x-axis time showing the years from 1998 to 2014 
and the y-axis will show the recorded temperatures between these dates. For simplicity, we will use only representative values and the actual exercise of the hardworking scientists cannot be compared to this explanatory section. So let's assume that these X marks are the actual data recorded over the years. How can I extract the 99th percentile design dry bulb temperature from this data? A 99th percentile simply means that for this number, 99% of the recordings taken are above this temperature. Ergo, you or your heating system will be able to counter the load produced from such temperatures. Over the years, this has proven to be quite successful. What about the other 1% you might ask? Well, yes, your heating system will tap out. But as explained before, the temperatures that fall below this number are really rare. They have very low frequency. Therefore, considering them will do more harm than good, if I may. Okay, so now that we've explained the concept, Let's head to the ASHRAE Climatic Design Conditions website to see how we determine the 99th dry bulb design value. So this is the user interface of the website. We must first select the location where the building to be designed is. On the map, and specifically on the desired location, right click with the mouse. A menu will pop up showing you the closest weather stations in the area and you choose the one that is closest or most similar in climate according to experience. As you see, station A is exactly at Chitura, the desired location. We select A and the results directly appear. For heating purposes, we can use the first table titled Annual Heating and Humidification Design Conditions. This part that says Heating Dry Bulb is the Heating Dry Bulb Design Temperature. You can see that there are two values, one being the 99th percent that we talked about and one being the 99.6 percent which we did not talk about. The 99.6 percent can be explained the same way we explained the 99 percent. It is a number that is lower than 99.6 percent of all recorded temperatures. Therefore, it is a safer number but also has more cost implications. Using the 99% will do the job and the heating design dry bulb temperature will be 0.7 degrees Celsius. But consider the 99.6% in certain cases where the extreme temperatures take place for elongated periods of time. So now that we have discussed temperature, we move on to humidity and how we determine the outdoor design humidity. Humidity in the winter drops and houses generally would require humidification. Therefore, our outdoor design humidity should be one of the low humidity values recorded. The same 99 percentile applies here as it did in the dry bulb temperature part. ASHRAE offers the humidity value through providing the 99th percentile of the dew point temperature or humidity ratio and mean coincident dry bulb temperature. They provide the mean since the similar value of humidity has variable dry bulb temperatures. With the help of a psychrometric chart, you can determine the outdoor relative humidity and there you go. But it is to be noted that generally in residential heating calculations, outdoor humidity can be ignored and have mostly little effect on comfort since changes are always close to the comfort zone, or it can be countered through simple unification standalone techniques. Again, let's head to the ASHRAE site to see where we can find the values we talked about. So this is the table we had previously used to obtain the dry bulb design tables, and from this same table we will obtain the humidity value the humidity shown under humidification. Similarly to the dry bulb temperature, use the 99th percentile. The numbers DP, which refers to dew point temperature, which is an indicator of humidity. HR is humidity ratio, 
and MCDB is the mean coincident gyro. We need two variables to determine relative humidity and we can use HR and MCDB. We record these two numbers and now using a psychrometric chart we get a relative humidity of approximately 30%. Moving on to wind speed. Wind speed can play a major factor in heat loss in two different ways. One, through outer film resistance, which is something we will discuss in a later video. But in brief, higher wind speeds decrease the ability of building walls to resist heat from escaping the house. Two, is through infiltration for poorly sealed houses, which also will be discussed in a future video. But in order not to keep you waiting, it is the infiltration of outside air to the interior of the building or house thus causing heat loss in the winter season. For these two reasons, ASHRAE provides wind speed in two forms. Let's check them out. For the last time, we head to the ASHRAE site. The wind speed is found under these two columns. This one is better for poorly sealed houses where maximum loads can be due to infiltration in the windiest of days, although the temperature is not the lowest. You can use the 1%. This one on the other hand is found as mean coincident wind speed, which coincides with the 99.6% temperature, which can be used for other properly sealed houses. Therefore, our wind speed values will be as follows. The top 1% wind speed for the coldest month will be 7.0 meter per second, while the coincident wind speed at the 99.6% dry bulb will be 0.9 meters per second. And that is how you determine wind speed. Here we should also note that a lot of designers may use a wind speed of 6.7 meters per second as a default assumption in the winter season. Okay guys, the video has come to an end, but make sure to see my next video in which we will determine the indoor and outdoor design conditions for an actual case study. Thank you very much for your time. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Hussein out.